Good morning, uh, Intro to Digital Media students. This is Mr. Roper, and uh, I'm going to do a video demonstration today on how to create your product ad for our next graphic design project. So I'm going to be using PhotoP. If you have Photoshop, you're welcome to use that. But uh, for most of us, I think PhotoP is working out pretty good. Uh, and what I'm going to be creating today is a product ad similar to the one you see here. I'm going to be combining a photo of the product that I choose. Um, some interesting surface details and textures for the background. Uh, I'm going to pick an interesting font. I'm going to include a logo. And then somewhere on there, I'll probably have some little graphic elements as well. So I think I'm going to try to emulate something like this for my demo. But feel free to branch out. You can see some of the student examples that I've included here. Uh, anything from video games to uh, clothing to cars to food and beverages. But it works best if you use a product that you have uh, already around your house. I think you can find some interesting stuff there. Okay, so to prepare for this, I downloaded a few images. I got uh, a set of Beats headphones here. I found a nice large size image uh, using my tools, size large. Uh, and then I also downloaded from the texture library, which uh, I shared with you guys a link to this. It's the my, my own personal Google texture library. And it has tons of folders in there filled with images that you can use for this project. So you're going to find things like surface textures, right? Metal, wood, cement, uh, patterns, bricks, all kinds of really nice high resolution images that you can use for your design. Okay. You'll also see some stuff in there like uh, paper, burnt paper. Um, there's some old like wrinkled papers and watercolor stains if you want to use those for your images. And you're also going to see some really cool stuff like light leaks if you want to create like color overlays in your design. Let me just open that one up so you can see it. Um, lots and lots of stuff you can explore in this folder uh, to use for your project. So I really encourage you to dive in there and see what you can find. Um, even these cool like paint tossing images, which I'm sure some of you can find some good reuses for. Okay, so let's start to bring all this together into PhotoP. I'm going to come over to PhotoP and I'm going to create a new project. And your dimensions for this one, we're doing one for print. Uh, and we're going to use a letter size paper. You can decide whether you want this to be vertical or horizontal, uh, and you can switch those dimensions right here to make it wide if you want. I'm going to do a horizontal design, and I'm going to go ahead and cl click Create. Uh, and I'm going to set up for myself some guidelines just by dragging some of these little guides from the side of the rulers here to create a little safe zone. This is basically going to tell me not to put any text outside these lines, right? Just to keep it organized. Then I'm going to start to bring in some of those texture library images that I downloaded. So let's open up. Uh, I know I've got these four images that I selected. They're going to open up as new uh, tabs, which is great. Uh, and let's start to put some of these together. I'm going to take my brick layer and I'm going to drag it over and drop it onto my canvas. Okay, uh, and I'll go ahead and call this layer bricks. And I'm gonna move it, it's a little big right now, so let me go edit, free transform, grab a corner. Of course, I'm holding down shift as I do this, and I'm gonna just make it fit a little bit better there, okay? Um, now, I also want to take the color out of this. I want it to be in black and white. So I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments, Black and White, and convert that to black and white. And I can adjust these sliders if I want it to look a little bit more dark and gritty. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK. Uh, I can close up that brick tab. And I'm going to go to my next one, which is some wood. I'll drag my wood into my design. There we go. Oops, I moved one of my guides by accident. Let's put that back over here. Good. And uh, what I'm going to do with this is I want to bend it so that it's on an angle. You can see from this one here, right? The wood looks like it's a, a floor that it's going back into space. So I'm going to uh, fake that by going up to edit, 
transform, and this time I'm gonna choose perspective. And when you choose perspective, if you grab a corner and you just pull it out, you see it's gonna tilt the image like it's at an angle. Whoops, let me close that up. Um, so this is really nice for kind of faking a ground level for your design. So I'm gonna just push this up. I'll go ahead and set the transformation. And I'm gonna move that layer, which I forgot to name, this is wood. I'm gonna move it underneath the bricks layer to create a little fake stage there, okay? Um, now it's looking pretty good so far. I, I probably wanna darken some of this up a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here to my tools and I've got this tool here called the burn tool, okay? And with the burn tool, what it does, it works like a paintbrush, um, but it makes whatever you paint with it darker. So I'm gonna bump this brush up pretty big. I want kind of a big fluffy brush here. Let me make sure that it's fluffy. I'm gonna turn the, the hardness all the way down, okay? And as I paint with this, you can see every time I brush over, it darkens the photo that's underneath of it. So it's creating like a, a little spotlight on this wood platform here. It looks really, really nice. I'm gonna actually gonna burn it right across the back here where it meets the ground as well. Let me do a little dark area right there. That looks great, okay? Uh, I'm gonna do the same on my bricks layer. So I'll go up to the bricks. I'm gonna add a little burn around the edge here, around the top, around the side. Sweet, this is looking pretty good already. Okay, um, if you want, you can take the color out of any of these. Again, I'm gonna just do that for my wood layer. I'll go image, adjust, black and white, just to get rid of that little bit of color I had in there. Okay, now let's bring in our Beats. So I'm gonna go to my Beats headphones and I've got quite a few different selection tools I could use for this. Uh, I think Magic Wand is probably gonna work best. So I'll go Magic Wand, grab, all the white on the outside, all the white on the inside, the white down here, grab some of these shadows. I'm just holding down shift as I click here Oops. Uh, to pick up some of this extra, maybe this little bit of white in here. Good, and that's pretty good for now. I can always clean this up in a minute. So right now I have all the white selected, but what I really wanna select is the headphones. So I'm gonna go here, select inverse, and that's gonna flip it so that now only the headphones are selected, okay? And I wanna use a mask for this. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom and select add mask, and boom, I've cut out my headphones in one click. I'm gonna drag them up and I'm gonna drop them into my design. I've gotta put them on top of the bricks layer here, so let's move them up. There we go. And of course, they need to be transformed a little bit. Let's go edit, uh, free transform, grab a corner, holding down shift, and I'll just enlarge this up. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that already. Uh, if I really wanna sell this a little bit more, I could add a drop shadow like we did on the Frankenstein project. So I'm gonna take that layer and I'm gonna go uh, right click, uh, blending options, and I'm gonna drag a drop shadow, okay? And I'll make sure that my drop shadow is pointing straight down from the top. I can change its distance if I want it to spread out more. I can change its spread. You can see what it's doing there. It's just softening that shadow. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, now we're ready to bring in some of our more colorful elements. So um, I'm gonna grab my Beats logo here. And right now it's in black, which probably won't show up very good on my bricks. So I'm gonna take the magic wand, I'm gonna select the black part of the logo here, and then take my move tool and drag it over into my project. Okay. Oops, it's a little bit laggy here, let's give it a second. Let's try that again. Uh, can I just cut it? These are the kind of problems we run into, so I'm glad you guys are kind of seeing this a little bit. Let me go back a step. There we go. I'm going to just copy it, Control-C, 
and I'll come over into here, control V, there we go, okay? Now, let's go ahead and blow this thing up. I'm gonna free transform larger, and I'll put it over here, and I'm gonna move it, I'll call this logo layer, I'm gonna move it underneath the headphones so they're behind it. And like I said, black isn't going to show up very good. So I think what I'll do is flip this to be white. And there's a really e easy trick for that. When you take a layer, you go to image, adjust, invert. It's going to flip the colors from black to white. Okay, boom, just like that. And then what I can do is I can mess with its layer mode. So right now it's on normal. But watch what happens if I put like screen and I turn down the opacity a little bit, I can make it transparent, make it look like it's actually spray painted onto that back wall. Uh, and there's lots of different ways you can do this. There's color dodge actually works really well for white images. It's gonna let it show through some of that brick texture. Uh, you can do soft light if you want it to be kind of faded. And let me turn this back up. That looks kind of neat. You could do hard light and then fade it out a little bit more. So lots of different options here. I think I like uh, Color Dodge best, so I'm gonna leave that on, okay? Um, I'm gonna need, of course, a slogan somewhere on here, um, but it's looking a little plain. I think what I wanna add in here is some light leaks. So I'm gonna go back to my texture library. I'm gonna go to, uh, let's go to light leaks here. And I'm gonna open up just one of these colorful light leaks images. Google Drive being a little bit slow this morning, but that's all right. Here we go. I like this one. I'm going to download it. I'm also going to pull, uh, where are they? I've got liquid ink, light streaks is a good one. This has got some really colorful light writing in it. Um, these kind of remind me of music, so I think this will work pretty good. I'm going to take this one and download it. I'm going to come back over into Photo P and open these up file. Actually, I better close these first. Let's get rid of these ones that I'm done with. Uh, okay, and we'll close this one. Okay, and we'll go file, open, and there's my two that I just downloaded. Boom, boom. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to bring these light leaks over into my ad. I'm going to drop them into the ad. I'm going to move this to the top of my stack and call it light streaks. Okay. And I'm gonna change it uh, with my blending modes here to something really cool. I'm gonna switch it from normal to screen mode. And what screen mode does is it gets rid of all the black and it just leaves the bright parts. So watch this, I click streak, boom. I've got instant light streaks that I can position around my design. They're blocking some of the headphones here. So what I'm gonna do is add a mask to it. I'll click make mask, cool. I'm gonna take the color black, like we've done a few times now, a black paintbrush, and I'm just gonna paint out some of these light leaks so that they look like they're going behind the headphones, okay? So these ones are actually going behind the headphones and creeping around back in front of the headphones on this side, okay? And the reason I'm using a mask for this is because if I mess up at all, you remember I can just switch to white and I can paint it back in, okay? Now I might decide, hey, uh, I actually want these light streaks to be a different color. So I can go to that light photo and I can go image, adjustments, hue and saturation. And watch what happens. When I pull on that hue slider, I can shift the color of those light leaks to whatever I want. So I'm gonna give kind of a purple one here. I can turn up the saturation if I want to a little bit. That's looking awesome. Um, great, so just a few more things. Let's um, hide the light streaks. Let me take this other one here. I'm gonna drag it over, do the same thing. Put it on top of my design. Edit, free transform. Let's rotate it this way. Let's enlarge it to cover the whole screen. There we go. And I'm gonna switch it again from background to screen, okay? And that's gonna just create this like colorful glow over everything. Maybe I move this 
underneath the headphones. Let's see how that looks. Or if I leave it on top, I could always turn down its uh, opacity a little bit or try some of these other modes, maybe soft light. Ooh, yeah, soft light works great. I'm going to go with that, okay? Soft light looks really awesome, gives me this nice glow. So the last thing I would need to do then is just put in my slogan, you know, like beats for your ears or uh, beats, hear everything. I'm going to come up with a slogan that works well for my product. Uh, you know, you can see some examples there. And finally, I'll save this out, file, export as a JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and save it nice and big like this. That looks great. And it's going to download. And from there, I can just rename it. We'll call this Roper Zach Product Ad. Okay. And this is ready to turn in once I add my text and the finishing effects. Okay. You guys, of course, will have a little bit more time to play around with this. So get creative. Really see what you can do with that texture library and how you can build up your layers with these different effects. I think you guys are gonna find some really cool stuff on this one, okay? Don't forget to name your layers as well. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, feel free to hit me up in the Google Hangouts. Uh, I'm happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one if you want that help. And uh, until then, we'll see you later on.